Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another special Halloween Closer Look. Today, we take a look at the 70s horror exploitation classic, The Hills Have Eyes, brought to us by horror master Wes Craven in 1977. In addition to that, I've got some very nice special editions of not only the first one, but also the second one from 1984. And we'll also take a look at the unrated editions of the 2006 remake and the 2007 sequel to the 2006 remake. Today on the Multimedia Chronicles. <laughs> Welcome back. Don't mind the sounds of the torture implements in the background there. We'll just leave them to their devices. So, only five years after Wes Craven shook the world with the last house on the left, uh, basically single-handedly kicking off the revenge genre of exploitation horror, he took the genre in yet another direction with 1977's The Hills Have Eyes. Starting off very nice as a family goes on a camping trip and encounters far more than they bargained for in the process as they happen across a family of cannibalistic mutants that want nothing more than to kill them and to eat them. And the horror ensues as the family is forced to confront their own primal natures simply to survive. Yeah, the original Hills Have Eyes still holds up really well today as quite the uh, shocking and disturbing edge-of-your-seat horror journey. So, of course, it did enjoy some moderate success, so in 1984 they did a sequel, but taking things in a very different direction, kind of going more the horror comedy route rather than the see how much we can disturb you with this sort of exploitation type stuff route that the first one went in. Yeah, fans seem to not like that one as much. I actually have yet to see it. It's the only one in the whole franchise I haven't seen yet, so I'm really looking forward to checking it out and experiencing the badness. Maybe I'll love it. Who knows? I'll let you know. Uh, and then, of course, in 2006, we got a remake, which uh, Wes Craven was involved with. He actually was a producer on that. And honestly, the remake is really freaking good. It's one of those cases where they actually did a really good job of it, and possibly because they involved the original creator, maybe? I don't know. Well, whatever the case may be, it's a pretty solid remake, taking a lot of the core concepts of the original and, you know, just updating it, modernizing it, making it a little bit more uh, intense by today's standards. And then the remake got a sequel the following year, in 2007, and unlike its predecessor sequel, uh, this one went in a more direct continuation route, but again, did something quite different from what was in the first one. And this time, Wes Craven was even more heavily involved, not only on board as an executive producer, but actually co-writing the film with his son, Jonathan, which is pretty cool. Anyway, let's head on down to the black table and we'll check out the two collector's editions I have from Arrow Video of the two originals and the Blu-ray editions I have of the remakes. Okay, so starting off with the original, The Hills Have Eyes, the wonderful limited edition hard box uh, set from Arrow Video. Just gorgeous. I was actually really lucky to get this. This uh, was originally released in 2016, and I bought it in 2021. I was genuinely shocked that I managed to find this and found it for a fairly decent price. It was just basically regular price, so very nice. No J card for this. Um, yeah, nowadays they come with J cards and they have other artwork on the back, but in this case it's actually printed. The, the contents are printed on the back of the box there, so yeah, you don't see that anymore. 
So, as always, a fairly standard hard box uh, set. Nice and uh, sturdy there. And then inside, we have, of course, the book that all hard box sets come from, a double sided poster, and the Blu ray itself. So, let's take a look at the Blu ray itself here first. There we go. Good old the legendary Michael Berryman on the cover. go and all the contents on the back it is of course a reversible cover so because we have the hard box i've uh, flipped the cover of the keep case around to the original poster art there there's actually quite a few different posters for this uh, movie especially for foreign markets and such and uh so we've got a whole bunch of postcards here which we'll take a look at in just a moment so there's the disc and as you can see it's the same artwork as you get on the hard box on the inside. And there you go. So we'll just take a quick look at the... Um, let's go back together here. There we go. Just being a little finicky. Uh, so we'll take a quick look at the cards here. So it's the same artwork on the back of all the cards. So like that. And we'll just uh, take a look at each one here. So we start off with that one. Very nice. And this one looks like a lobby card. Yeah. Lead into easily one of the most disturbing scenes from the movie right there. Pretty, uh... Oh, look, another part of that scene. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah, a little, a little rough. But this is also, uh, you know, Wes Craven's early days. Where he was very much into the sort of exploitation horror and whatnot. Uh, this was just a few years after Last House on the Left. And, uh, yeah. Intense stuff, man. Intense stuff. But yeah, I had the old blu-ray of this uh so my longtime viewers might recall i did a review just a very short review of the movie many moons ago and i had that blu-ray set and uh well just studio release blu-ray and it was garbage it was such garbage like the worst transfer great extras but terrible transfer so we'll take a look at the book here so as always uh this beautiful matte finish. Love that. Very classy. Full of all kinds of uh, goodies about the making of the movie. These books are always fascinating reading. Enjoyed them all immensely. And, of course, Arrow also does just books as well. They have a whole series of standalone books you can get about different, uh, you know, movie makers or different different things in cinema. Yeah, that's a good description. Different things in cinema. I love things in cinema. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I have a couple of them that were sent to me by a viewer. Very, very cool. Very good. Yeah, it looks like they did a, a lot of publicity shots for this as well, which is pretty cool. And there we go. But uh, very, very nice books. I always find these to be fascinating reading. Usually full of, uh, typically, essays about the film. And they'll talk about the making of the film, cultural impact, if there was any, and things like that, how it was received at the time, and, and peppered with some well-educated opinions and analyses, you know. Really good stuff. So this uh, edition is actually remastered. Uh, it's a 4K remaster from uh, much higher quality elements than I guess were used for the uh, the old MGM release. So there we go. And as for the poster, uh, well, we'll see how much of it we can fit in the screen here. Just give me a second. So we have... Yeah, we're gonna have to pull back a little bit. Let's uh, let's pull back a bit. Uh huh. 
Well, that's about as far back as we can go. Uh, I don't feel like repositioning the camera. You'll get the gist of it anyway. So, there we go. Nice double-sided camera. A nice American family. They didn't want to kill, but they didn't want to die. Yeah, this is great stuff. Very intense and one that I'm looking forward to revisiting in much nicer quality than what I've seen before. Okay, so why don't you just take a look at that whilst I go over the extras here on the back. So, we got a brand new 4K restoration of the film supervised by producer Peter Locke and viewable with both original and alternate endings. That's pretty cool. Uh, high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation, original uncompressed PCM mono audio, optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, six postcards, reversible fold-out poster, limited edition 40-page booklet featuring new writing on the film by critic Brad Stevens, and a consideration of the Hills franchise by disc producer Ewan Kant, uh, illustrated with original archive stills and posters. Brand new audio commentary with actors Michael Berryman, Janice Blythe, Susan Lanier, and Martin Spear. Very cool. Another brand new audio commentary by academic Mikael J. Coven, and an archival audio, audio commentary with Wes Craven and Peter Locke. So you got three commentaries on there. That's great. Great stuff. Looking Back on the Hills Have Eyes, a making of documentary featuring interviews with Wes Craven, Peter Locke, actors Michael Berryman, Janice Blythe, Robert Houston, uh, Susan Lanier, D. Wallace, and director of photography Eric Saarinen. Family Business, a brand new interview with actor Martin Spear. The Desert Sessions, a brand new interview with composer Don Peak. Never before seen outtakes. Uh, the alternate ending presented in HD for the first time. Trailers and TV spots. Image gallery. The original screenplay on BD-ROM and the reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Paul Shipper. So, very, very nice. This is this is the kind of edition The Hills Have Eyes has always deserved. I mean, it's such a, a huge uh, cult classic that uh, I, I'm surprised it took so long to get a deluxe edition like this. But, uh, hey, arrow to the rescue, right? So, let's see here. We want to put this in this way, I think. Yeah, I usually like to put the poster, the book in first, then the poster, and then the, uh, the keep case like that. So, there we go. And there's the, uh, the spine. If you want to know how it'll look on your shelf, or if you want to do it that way because you're a freak, you can. <laughs> So, of course, about a week after I filmed this closer look, what does Arrow do? They announce a 4K release of their Hills Have Eyes limited edition set. So, there you go. Pretty easy to get and in glorious 4K. I mean, look at this. It's basically got everything that's in the Blu-ray edition, but in 4K. So, there you go. Enjoy. Uh, now, bear in mind, with these releases, it's 4K only and does not include the Blu-ray. So, if you only have Blu-ray, you probably want to track down the Blu-ray edition. But, uh, as always, there will be Amazon links everywhere in the description to everything you see in this video. I'll be sure to include both the Blu-ray and 4K editions for you, so you can uh, get whichever one you prefer. All right, next up we have... The Hills Have Eyes Part 2. Yeah. So this one actually does come with the J card. We'll uh, we'll take that off in a moment here. So we just take a look at the back there. Very nice. This is actually the only one of the entire, uh, you know, history of the franchise that I've never seen. And this is kind of the notorious one that everybody talks about because it's apparently not that great, but it's hilariously not that great in a lot of ways. So, yeah, looking forward to checking this out when I get around to doing a rewatch of the first one. I'll just do a double bill, go right into this one. So, uh, yeah, so this one does say that it's Region B. It actually is not. It is region free. This was released in the U.S. at the same time, I guess, or around the same time. So even though it technically says it's region B, it's actually region free. Uh, the only difference is being the U.K. release. It does have the U.K. 
ratings uh, sticker on it. And what does it say? Contains strong violence and horror, suitable only for persons of 18 years and over, not to be supplied to any person below that age. So there you go. Very strict. So let's take the J card off. And we'll take a look at the hard box. So there's the spine there, which uh, goes very well with uh, the original, as you can see. They line up quite nicely on your shelf. Even if you do it this way, like a freak, you can. <laughs> but I don't think anybody does that. Everybody does it this way. So there you go. Anyway, um, get some actual artwork on the back of the box. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons I guess they introduced the J cards, because you could get one more bit of art, which is nice. And uh, nothing on the top, nothing on the bottom. Uh, it's the same with this one, just kind of a continuation of the artwork there. And then nothing on the bottom, so just in case you were wondering, just to be thorough. So, slide everything out. Once again, nice hard box, gotta love it, very sturdy. So here again we have a reversible cover. This is the original poster art here. And uh, Michael Berryman back again, of course. And the spine and the back so uh, different color scheme for the uh, two covers as well which we'll take a look at just a sec here so once again we have some postcards which we'll look at in just a moment and there's the disc and there you go so as you can see this uh, color scheme is more in line with the hard box color scheme it's sort of the red and black orange whereas the uh, um, hold on. theatrical poster side is more kind of a blue and white motif and then uh, nice white text on the dark background there so that's very nice so let's take a look at the uh, postcards here uh, once again we have the same artwork on the back of all of them so we'll just go one by one here so we have one of the movie posters. This might actually be the uh, VHS release. Thor and Emmy. I remember they uh, were a big VHS release studio back in the day. And then we have what looks like a lobby card. I love when they give us the lobby cards. Very nice. And another lobby card. Or maybe publicity. It might be publicity still, actually. So... Yeah, so apparently this one they went more in kind of a tongue-in-cheek route. It's not as, uh, you know, terrifying horror as the first one was. But uh, that's that. And there we go. That looks like a lobby card. Very nice. And finally, got that one there. And this is also from when uh, uh, Arrow started to put cards in promoting upcoming releases. So we have Edgar Wright's A Fistful of Fingers, which I've never seen. I love Edgar Wright's other films. I actually didn't even know he did a Western, so I don't know how I, I missed this one. But uh, definitely one I'd like to check out. And then on the back, we just have Oceans of Arrow releases. Give us all your money. There we go. So I'm just going to uh, put these all back in the order they were in because I'm kind of anal that way. Set that aside, set that aside. And then, of course, we have the book. And nothing really on the back. But uh, once again, lots of stuff. Uh, you got to love Arrow and, you know, boutique labels like that. They just give... Every film, regardless of how it may be regarded, the royal treatment, you know. And uh, this one is no exception, even though the sequel is generally considered to be a, a pale follow-up to the, uh, you know, balls-to-the-wall terrifying original. Um, they still didn't skimp on the uh, presentation. I mean, this is, this is beautiful. It's very nice. Very nice indeed. 
So yeah, I uh, I definitely look forward to uh, checking this out on my next rewatch of the franchise. I haven't seen the remakes for quite a while either. So I remember uh, thinking that the first remake was actually quite good. But we'll get to that in a moment here. There we go. So all kinds of goodies about the making of the movie. So it's nice that this is region free. So if for any reason you're in North America and want this for your collection but can't find it and don't have a region free player, it's okay. Just track down the UK release and you're you're all set. You know. You don't have to worry about it. I tested. I actually popped this into my PS3, which is the ultimate test of if something is is region free or not. And yep, the movie, all the extras, everything played without a hitch. So it is 100% region free. You don't have to worry about a thing. And there we go. Very nice. And once again, I'm not going to bother pulling back this time. You you get the gist, gist of the idea. You know what you know what you're looking at. So we have the Hills Have Eyes Part 2 with the new poster art and everything, and it's, it's very nice. Yeah. And then you have the the original poster art there, which is very nice. Let's go down this side here. Yeah. It, it's basically what you saw on the on the cover there, so you get the idea. Let's just open this up. Put all the stuff back in. There we go. And once again, we want to go book, uh, poster, keep case. And there we go. Snug as a bug in a rug. And now that I put everything all nicely back together, uh, we need to go over the extras. So I'm just gonna read them off the back of the handy dandy J card here. All right, so what do we have for The Hills Have Eyes Part Two? We have a brand new 2K restoration from Original Film Elements, a high definition Blu-ray 1080p presentation, original uncompressed mono audio, optional English subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing, brand new audio commentary with the Hysteria Continues. Blood, Sand, and Fire, The Making of The Hills Have Eyes, Part 2. Making of documentary featuring interviews with producer Peter Locke, actors Michael Berryman and Janice Blythe, uh, production designer Dominic Bruno, composer Harry Manfredini, and unit production manager, first assistant director John Callas. We've got a still gallery, original theatrical trailer, reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Paul Shipper, reversible fold-out poster, six postcards, and a limited edition 40-page booklet featuring new writing on the film by Amanda Reyes and an archival set visit article from Fangoria. Very cool. So, not as loaded as the first one, but still a very nice selection of extras. And where they were lacking in on-disc extras, they certainly made up for it with all the pack-ins, uh, especially that book. There's great, great stuff in that book. So we're not quite done yet because we have the 2006 remake. Yeah, the unrated edition. The integral edition. Le visage de la peur. Integral. The version to die for. All right, I'm done. Anyway, so uh, yeah. When it comes to horror movies, I tend to go for the unrated version that usually is the only version I'll watch because... As far as I'm concerned, that's the version the filmmakers wanted us to see before the MPAA got their grubby little digits on it and uh, made them cut a bunch of stuff out. So, yeah, give me the unrated version every time. All the blood and guts and horrifying moments intact. Thank you very much. Uh, quite a lot of extras on here, which we'll go through in just a moment. Wow. Boy, after going from the Arrow edition to this. Hmm. Uh-huh. Eco case. No interior art. Wow. Well, this won't take very long to go through. All right. So what do we got here? We have commentary by screenplay writer and director Alexander Aja, screenplay writer, art director Gregory Labasseur, and producer Marianne Madalena. A second commentary by producers Wes Craven and Peter Locke. 
Surviving the Hills, Making of the Hills Have Eyes, Production Diaries, and a music video, Leave the Broken Hearts by the Finalist, and the theatrical trailer. So yeah, it's actually very nice. Wes Craven is involved, or was involved, with every single iteration of The Hills Have Eyes in some way. In this case, he was uh, he was on as producer, and, uh, and it's great. And I remember actually really liking this. I watched this after watching the original. I, I think I kind of double build them if I remember correctly and um, I didn't have the second one like the second the original second one so I just watched the second the, the sequel to this right after and um, I thought wow I wonder if this is anything like the uh, the original sequel no apparently not the, the uh, remake sequel also the unrated edition integral edition um, goes in a completely different direction from the original sequel. So, uh, yeah, kind of interesting. Wes Craven actually wrote the screenplay for this. He co-wrote it with his son. And the two of them, uh, you know, decided to do something a little different, a little more interesting as far as doing a follow-up to The Hills Have Eyes. The first one's more or less a straight-up remake with some modern uh, twists to it. Um, it hits much the same beats as the original, but a little more intense, a little bit more horrifying because, you know, more recent. But uh, but yeah, so when did this one come out? This was 2007. So it was actually the following year they, uh, they put this one out. So we take a look here. There we go. Quite a lot of special features on this one. Uh, and... Yeah, there we go. And it looks like we have an insert. And I don't think this is an eco case. Nope, it's actually just a regular case. What's this here? Um, oh, just a thing about updating your player if it needs it. A lot of old uh, Blu-ray releases had that. Add for some more Blu-ray releases. Coming soon on Blu-ray. That's how long ago this was. Ooh, speed is coming to Blu-ray. Excellent, yeah. And Ice Age. I wonder if we'll ever get any sequels to Ice Age. Oh, that is a sequel. Never mind. There goes my joke. Anyway, um, yeah, I think I have a good chunk of these. I have Kingdom of Heaven Director's Cut. I have Fantastic Four. Uh, I have X-Men The Last Stand, unfortunately. I have Speed. Uh, I don't have any of the others, though. I've seen this. Haven't seen this. Haven't seen this. Haven't seen this. Haven't seen this. Anyway, cool. So let's see what we got for extras on this one. So we have, uh, ooh, we have smart menu technology. Good. I'm tired of my menus being dumb. Uh, <laughs> 1080p HD resolution provides dazzling, unparalleled picture quality. Lossless audio delivers the purest digital sound available. Smart menu technology floats on screen during playback, so you never leave the film. Uh, that sounds really annoying, the way they describe it. It's like, what, you just it just stays on the screen the whole time? No, what they mean is it's a pop-up menu, so you can, you know, most Blu-rays have that. It's just, I guess it was a fancy schmancy new thing at the time. Um, so in terms of uh, special features, we've got deleted scenes, we've got an alternate ending, we've got a gag reel, we've got a mutant attack attacks featurette, birth of a graphic novel featurette. Oh, did they do a Hills Have Eyes graphic novel? I was unaware of that or i guess i was aware at some point and then forgot well cool might have to track that down uh exploring the hills the making of the hills have eyes 2 featurette and a fox fox movie channel presents life after film school with wes craven that's pretty cool i could have sworn there was a commentary track on here but i guess there isn't it's just uh um the featurettes i think um it's Wes and Jonathan. Yeah, Jonathan Craven is his son. So, yeah, Wes Craven was the uh, producer and screenwriter for this. And it was directed by Martin Weiss. So, there you go. So, that's the entire remake saga of The Hills Have Eyes. And then, of course, the entire original saga of The Hills Have Eyes. And there you go. And if you want to know how that all looks on my shelf... There you go. And that's how it could look on your shelf, too. Maybe not with the French if you buy the American releases. But anyway, there you go. The entire saga of The Hills Have Eyes, old and new.
Oh, before anyone says, well, actually, that's not technically complete, actually, because there's this one. Yeah, I am aware of this in-name-only sequel, which is actually a movie called Mind Ripper, but for some reason it's occasionally marketed as The Hills Have Eyes 3. Eh, I'll probably get it at some point, just because Wes Craven was peripherally involved with it, and I do like Lance Henriksen, but, yeah, it's not really part of the series. So, there you go. If you're looking for a little something to satisfy your cannibalistic cravings for backwoods horror, well, you can't go wrong with The Hills Have Eyes, truly one of the granddaddies of the genre. Alrighty, well, that is it from me to you for now. Hope you enjoyed. As always, if you'd like to add any of the Blu-rays discussed in this video to your collection, I will include Amazon links in the description down below. Big thanks to those of you who use my Amazon links, because I do get a little kickback every time you buy something through one of them. Um, and it does help to support the show. It doesn't cost you any more than it would normally. So big thanks to you for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream just about every day. And I will see you next time. Until then, sayonara.